For historian Tony Warner, conversations around race and equality in Britain can feel very much like déjà vu. As the founder of a company that provides historical tours of London, highlighting places significant to the black experience, he's well placed to fill in some of the gaps in black British history, including the story of the man who became the first black man to sit in the House of Lords, Sir Larry Constantine. In the 1940s, he was as famous then as Usain Bolt is now. And during the 40s, of course, World War II was on, and um, Larry Constantine was employed by the British government to look after the welfare of the thousands of African Caribbean people who have left the Caribbean to come and help um, fight the war in England. Um, as a person who traveled a lot, he'd often protect himself by asking if it was okay for him to stay in a certain hotel, and by the way, I'm black guy. So he'd actually bring- Well, why did he have to say, but I'm black, by the way, do not be alarmed. Because it was, it was typical to be refused accommodation as a black person, and when it came to private homes or hotels, so to avoid that problem, he'd actually ring in advance and say, I'd like to book an hotel, and by the way, I'm a black guy, is that cool? So that's what he did. So he booked into the Imperial Hotel. The one one, yeah, the one that's there. on that site there yeah. now. And he'd come, to, come there with his uh, wife and daughter, and he was gonna, supposed to stay for four nights. But when he got there, he was told he couldn't stay there because he was black. So he called his manager, who was a white guy, came down to discuss the issue with the, the hotel. And the hotel told the manager the same thing, that he could not stay in that hotel because he was an NIGGR and the white American troops who were staying there wouldn't like it. Therefore, he was forced to go to a hotel around the corner from the Imperial Hotel. So, of course, that is very embarrassing for him, being a big star here, helping the war effort, fighting for Britain, basically, and then being refused accommodation. So he actually sued the hotel. Although at this time, there's no laws against risk discrimination. So he actually sued the hotel for breach of contract and he won his case. So he becomes the, a, a part of the kind of the civil rights movement in this country. He actually successfully sues this hotel for risk discrimination. And that sets a kind of a, a trend across the entire nation that you can actually win your case for discrimination in England and it then also inspires other people to do the same sort of thing. So it's a major landmark, but most people don't know about Louis Constantine or the hotel or where it is or anything about that.